Hey guys, as a lot of you know, 2016 was pretty rough for me medically speaking. I was hospitalized in February, but in April I had to go on dialysis due to kidney failure as a direct result of Wegne Wegner's granular mitosis. So over about the last nine months or so, I've been going through dialysis two or three days a week, depending on the week, and um, have, have noticed a few things. So I thought I'd put together a list of 10-ish things that will help you get through dialysis a little bit more comfortably. So here they are in no particular order. Number one, dress appropriately. Um, I've been to a couple of different centers now and the first center I was in was actually while I was still hospitalized and it was freezing all of the time. So I had to try to dress in layers and bring blankets and all kinds of stuff. Um, but we will definitely get more into the specifics of what, what that was like in a different video. The center that I'm at now, uh, some days it's hot, some days it's cold, some days it switches right in the middle. Um, so again, dress and layer. That, that's really all I can say is find out what your what your dialysis center is going to be like and dress appropriately for that. Also, as a subset of, of dressing appropriately, depending on what kind of a, a, an access you've got for your dialysis treatments, you may have a fistula, which is typically a bunch of uh, where, they, where they've gathered a group of veins in your arm and they'll stick a couple of, uh, of needles into that. You, you may have something like what I've got here, which is where they access uh, my catheter or my, my dialysis treatments through a port in my chest. You can actually see that right here. It goes up and over and down. There's another gentleman in, in uh, the clinic that I go to that has an access in his leg. So um, in addition to dressing for the temperature of, of the facility, also make sure that it's easy for, for your techs and your nurses to get to your access. So for instance, this, wearing a t-shirt with, with my chest port, isn't a great way to dress for that. Most days when I go, I actually wear a button down shirt, um, not to look good, but because it gives them easier access to my dialysis port. Number two. So the fact of the matter is that dialysis is very, very hard on your body. Um, even though there's a machine doing the work of your kidneys, um, it still takes a lot out of you physically to go through a dialysis treatment. So it's, it's normal to feel tired and nauseous and just sick during and even after a dialysis treatment. Um, if this is something that you've noticed is starting to become normal, definitely talk to your doctor. Um, your doctor may be able to prescribe something like Zofran, which is an anti-nausea medication, um, or something similar that, that may help as well. Something else that I've noticed that really helps me is if I eat just a little something before I go in. Um, a lot of times that will kind of counteract the the gross feeling that I get while I'm going through the treatment. Also, after dialysis treatments, I like to come home and grab a snack to kind of help give myself a little bit of an energy boost because otherwise afterwards, a lot of times I feel like I just want to come home and take a nap. But I've noticed if I get something to eat, I can usually go on through the rest of my day without uh, without feeling too bad. Number three. Now this one should really come as no surprise, but I kind of feel like I have to say it because I witness it so often, really at both of the treatment facilities I've been at. And that's just, don't be a jerk. And chances are you're not the only person at wherever you're getting dialysis. That is if you're going to a facility anyway. So if you're going to, um, if you're gonna bring your cell phone to watch videos or a laptop or a tablet or uh, you know, a lot of a lot of these places will have TVs at each of their locations or each of their little uh, uh, their, their dialysis stations for each patient. And bring some headphones. Nobody wants to listen to whatever you're watching. Nobody wants to listen to your music. Nobody wants to listen to your favorite podcast. So do everybody a favor. Don't be a jerk, bring some headphones. Kind of a sub note to that is be nice to the staff. Um, these people have, have chosen a career where they want to help you medically. If you're not feeling well, talk to them and they may, they may have a good answer for you that you may not like. And they may have that answer for a reason. Ask them what that reason is, get some more information, but don't yell at them, don't be mean to them. Um, they know what they're doing and, and there's a reason they've given that answer. So please, please, please be nice to your staff um, be courteous to the other patients there. And, and like I said, just don't be a jerk. Number four. So a lot like number three, I don't feel like this needs to be said. Well, I feel like it shouldn't need to be said, but again, there's, there's always that guy. Um, and I say a guy universally speaking, but from my experience, there's this one guy at the, at the facility I go to and it's don't be gross. Like I said, I shouldn't have to say that, but there's this, this one person there, this one guy who, does a lot of snot sucking and snorting and coughing and horking and just making all kinds of just awful noises uh, with his phlegm and bodily fluids and then makes a big scene about spitting him into the trash can and it's just, it's awful. So don't, I mean, please for the love of whoever you believe in, don't be that guy. 
number five. Another simple rule. So nurses and techs are going to be all up in your personal space, um, you know, getting your getting your dialysis treatment set up again, whether it's in your arm or in your chest or wherever it happens to be. Nurses are going to invade your personal space. Do them a favor and take a shower. Brush your teeth. Be hygienic. And no, bathing in your favorite cologne, body spray, sports stuff, whatever is not a substitute. Go get yourself wet. Lather yourself up in the shower or the bath. I don't care. Bathe yourself before you go in so that you don't stink. And again, they're gonna be all up in your business, so brush your teeth. Number six, so when I first started dialysis, I was actually going in for treatments that were four or five hours long. And this one I learned from personal experience very, very quickly, and that is bring something to do. Your treatments are gonna last anywhere from like three to five hours, and they can be very, very, very boring. You're gonna be sitting there for a long time not being able to get up and go to the bathroom or, or go out to your car and get something to do. So bring a tablet, bring a crossword, bring, bring your cell phone, bring some headphones, bring another person who can keep you entertained. Uh, I'm very fortunate in that my wife is able to go to me or go with me to almost all of my treatments, uh, barring very rare exceptions, and we keep each other entertained by picking on each other or, or talking to each other or sharing pictures on social media or whatever. But bring something to do. It's, it's, a, it's a long session, you're gonna be bored, and it helps pass the time much more quickly if you can keep your brain going a little bit. And if you forget, if you if you don't have anything that you can bring, take a nap. Don't, don't just sit there and watch the clock because three hours will turn into five, will turn into 10, and it's just miserable. So make sure that you can keep yourself entertained. Number seven, again, this one, this one's pretty self-explanatory, pretty, I don't know, I shouldn't have to say this one. I really shouldn't have to say any of these, but, um, be, be friendly. Dialysis is typically something that you're going to go through for a very long time um, unless you move or or your your center closes or something drastic changes. You're going to be around these people for, for a long time, probably a year, two years, five years, ten years maybe, um, that you're going to be seeing these same nurses and these same techs and even some of these same patients to them. Be nice to them. You know, we're all going to have bad days and, and, and that sucks but don't take it out on the people around you that are there. The, the, the people that are there are there to help you, um, at least the techs and nurses are. And, and you, don't wanna, you don't wanna show up in a bad mood and, and just have, have the world kind of fall in around you with everybody else picking up on your bad mood and then reciprocating that. So go in, have a positive attitude. If you don't feel well, talk to your nurse. Find out what you can do to, to maybe feel better, but definitely go in with a good attitude and it will be much easier both for you and everyone around you. Number eight. So number eight, I actually talked to it with uh, with one of the techs at my local facility, and and she wanted me to to bring up something that I hadn't even thought about, and that's be nice to the trainees. Um, the trainees are new; they're still learning. They're they're not familiar with with your condition, with your particular setup, with with your history. You know, they're still learning the machines. They're still learning the procedures. Cut them some slack, be gentle on them. Like I said, we all have bad days and that sucks, but don't, don't hold the newness of somebody being there. Don't hold somebody's bad day against them. Be nice to the techs and the trainees. Number nine. Now this is a big one. Um, number nine is know your medical history. The more you know about yourself physically and, and your medical past and your medications and your diet and your, uh, your allergies, the more you know about that stuff and the more that you can uh, be cognitive of the things that are going on, uh, the more you can actually help your techs and your nurses uh, provide good solid care for you. Currently, uh, the, my nephrologist comes in uh, to, the, to the center a couple of days a week and I have a chance to talk to him. And the more that I can be up to date on my, my medical history, whether it's with nephrology or rheumatology or, or any of the other ologies that I've got, the more I can know about that, the more that I can be helpful to the nephrologist, to the techs, to the nurses, to let them know uh, what's going on with me, what my allergies are, what my symptoms are, what treatments I'm going through in other facilities, things like that. And the more you can do that, the easier it makes your treatments and the easier it makes the, the job for the tech and the nurses. Okay, so there you have it. There's 10-ish things that I've put together uh, to, to help with dialysis, to make it a little easier, to make it not suck quite so much. If I missed anything, uh, if you've got comments, questions, anything like that, please leave those in the comment. I would love to, to start a, a conversation with you about uh, any of those questions, comments, concerns, any of that that you've got. 
um, and, and we can definitely do that in the comment section down below. Also, if you found this video helpful, um, entertaining, interesting, if you or, 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 or any of that, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That lets me know that you're interested. Um, and if you know somebody who is going through dialysis, who is getting ready to go through dialysis, if you're getting ready to go through dialysis, be sure to share this video with them. Or if it's you, hit the subscribe button. I'm gonna be doing more videos like this um, to, to kind of help get through the medical, uh, through the medical stuff that, that has a real big tendency to be stressful and just suck in general. So hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I release new videos. And uh, I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you guys in the next one.